Some real-life situations are examples of using arrangements. For example, how many ways can we seat a family of six people, a mother, father and four children, at a dining table, with one at each end and two along each side, if 1. Anyone may sit at any seat, or 2. The two parents must be seated one at each end of the table. Let's look at part 1 first, and let's draw a rough diagram of what's going on and we can give each seat a different colour to help us understand the situation. And we have a mother, father, and four children, let's call them A, B, C, and D. So those are six people in the family. And we want to seat them at this table, and anyone may sit at any seat. So we're doing part one first. So we can start at any seat, make a choice, and then do the same for any other seat, and keep doing that until all six seats are occupied. Let's start with the red seat. The key thing is, how many choices do we have at this stage? Well, we have six people in the family, and we can seat any one of those at that seat. So really, we have six choices. Let's write that in. We can go to any other seat now. Doesn't really matter. Might as well do it a little bit methodically, so let's go to the orange seat. Now, how many choices do we have? Well, imagine we've chosen the father to be at the red seat, and now we're going to the orange seat we can choose any of the five remaining people. So it could be one of the children at the orange seat. It doesn't really matter. Now let's go to the yellow seat. How many choices do we have? We've got four choices remaining. For example, we could put the mother on the yellow seat. And now the green seat. How many choices do we have? Well, we can put in A, C, or D. We can put any of those at this seat. So we have three choices. So let's say we put D in that one. And now for the blue seat, we've got two choices. Let's say, for example, C. And finally, for the purple seat, we only have one choice. We've only one person left, so we have one choice. So one choice here. So we can see that we had six choices, five, four, three, two, and one. So as usual, we multiply them. Six by five, by four, by three, by two, by one. Or in fact, we could say 6 factorial, and that's 720. So there's 720 different arrangements we could make in that simple scenario. We don't really have to draw out a table and different coloured seats, but in this scenario it does help. We could just draw this out as 6 different slots. Again, just for this example, we're going to use different colours. We don't really have to. So we have six different decisions to make. So for the first decision, we have six choices. And then for the second, it's five, four, three, two, and one. And we multiply them. So we could do it out like that if we wish. And remember, it doesn't really matter which seat we decide to fill first. So we could do this in a completely different order. So we could start with the yellow seat. How many choices do we have? Six. And then the blue seat, we've got five remaining choices. Four, three, two, and one again. So in any case, it's still going to come out as 720. So with no restrictions, we've got a lot of arrangements or permutations in this scenario. Let's look at the second scenario. So in part two, the two parents must be seated one at each end of the table. So let's draw the diagram again. We've got mother, father, and four children. We're going to call them A, B, C, and D. So we always start with the slots that have a restriction on them. The two parents must be seated one at each end of the table. So the red seat and the green seat, we need to tackle these first. So how many choices do we have for the red seat? Either the mother or the father can sit at this seat. So we have two choices. So for example, the mother could be seated at the red seat. Now we need to deal with the green seat. So either the mother or the father must sit here. The mother is already seated, so it's got to be the father. We have one choice. So now the remaining seats, we can put any of the children at any of these seats. So let's look at the orange seat. We could have any one of the four children. So let's say B. For the yellow seat, we've got three remaining children. Let's say C sits there. For the blue seat, two remaining children. 
we could pick A, and for the purple seat, got one choice. So if we start at the red seat and go clockwise, we have two choices by four, by three, by one, by two, by one. If you multiply that out, you get 48. So we have 48 choices now. We had 720 different arrangements when we had no restrictions. As we get used to these kinds of questions, we don't really have to use different colours. We can just say, well, there are six slots, six different seats, and we can indicate the two ends of the table by having a double line or something like that. And now we know we're choosing among six different people, and we know that these two slots are the restrictive ones, so we must deal with them first. So for the first one, we must choose among two parents, so we have only two choices. And here we must choose among one remaining parent, so we have one choice. And for the other ones, we must choose among four children, three, two, and one. And we multiply, we get 48. So we don't really need to use all the different colours. It's just helpful for us to visualise it when we're learning it.